Do you want to unmute? There you go. Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting. Uh, morning to you, Matt. How are you doing? Good, thanks you. Yeah, I'm all right. Thank you. I imagine you're pretty frustrated that sort of twice now in the space of a few weeks where, you know, within hours of kickoff, a, a game has been called off and it's completely out of your control. Yeah, it is very frustrating. Um, doing all the work, building up to it. Get to the game, obviously. You're ready to play. Just uh, It was a big game for us last night and we knew that. Uh, we took a good point at the weekend against the Good West Ham. So we were looking forward to the game, done the work, like I said. But, you know, just sat eating a pre-match meal and the sports scientist came in and said it's off. So, yeah, very frustrating. You won't be aware of this, but literally within the last hour, Thomas Frank was doing his press conference at Brentford and, and got a phone call in the middle of it from his chief executive saying 13 players have now tested positive for COVID. Thomas Frank saying this entire round of Premier League games this weekend should be postponed. It's something completely out of your control, I know, as a player, but is it something that you worry about? I think it's becoming more frequent, yeah. Uh, like you say, we can't really control it. We can only do what we can do here. Um, we, we train as if the game's on. You know, obviously, we have to be professional in that in that uh, respect. So, it's you know, like I say, we, we go out, we train today, we train tomorrow as if the game's on. And, you know, we have to be ready for, hopefully, that the, uh, the game is on. And just generally, you know, I mean, you, you know, you've got a young family. Is it something that you do worry about? Do you try to avoid the headlines? Do you try not to to watch the news at night? Because it does seem very ominous and doom and gloom at the moment. Uh, yeah, obviously, it's not been a great um, last couple of years for everyone, uh, really. But, you know, you, like I said before, you can only do what you can do uh, to try and, you know, avoid catching it, I suppose. But I think it's it's, it's quite rife at the minute. It's, it's difficult. People are getting it you know, here, there and everywhere and not knowing it and things like that. So it's hard, but you just got to be, got to do as much as you can to try and, you know, look after your, yourselves and your family. Well, let's hope your game at the weekend does go ahead. Obviously, you've been back to Villa Park loads over the last six years. Um, but I want to ask you about Steven Gerrard. Are you aware of how many times you played against him as a player? Um, no, not a natural number. I reckon it's, you know, three or four, maybe something like that. I've done my research. It's three times. <laughs> Is it three? Uh, there, there, were, there were two defeats at Villa Park, but a 3-1 win at Anfield. Is that a match that you remember? Yeah, very well, yeah. <laughs> can you name the, the scorers? Can you name Can you name the lineup? I think Andy, did that Andy get the first one? And then I think Christian scored twice. That's right. Well, they were. Yeah, I do remember it quite well, yeah. I think it was the, well, the first, well, definitely the first time I went to Anfield. And obviously, great ground. Watched it growing up, Champions League nights, things like that. So it was a special time to play there. So, you know, to go and win was good. I think we could have literally been four down after 20 minutes, to be honest, but you know, we hung out and ended up with a good win, so yeah, I do remember it quite well. You had a fellow Burnley teammate in the lineup that day as well? Westy. Yeah, he was there as well. Yeah. We'll both remember it fondly. Does it, is, is it something that, I don't want to use the expression, makes you feel old, but when you're coming up against managers now who you played <laughs> against as a player, do you kind of think, cheapers? how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely gone quick, I'll be honest. Um, I do remember it quite well, like I say, and I was I think it must have been nine years ago now. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously he was coming towards the end of his, his playing career and um, he's obviously going to be managing now and he started started really well, as you know, I think most people thought he would because he was an exceptional player. So, I mean, it doesn't always work out like that, but, you know, you just see the way that he was as a person, as a player, that, you know, you're not surprised that he's doing well in management. And just finally, you know, as I said, it, it, it's been a long time since you left Villa, but is it still a club that holds a special place in your heart? You know, Villa Park is a special ground and and they're the ones that you gave you a big opportunity in the top flight. That's it, yeah. They were the, that was the club that um, gave me, me the chance in the Premier League, you know. Um, so we're forever grateful for that. I uh, enjoyed, you know, every minute of it there. It didn't quite work out in the end, but, you know, but no, I can't think of anything that I didn't like about it. The clubs, you know, it's massive. Like you say, the atmosphere at the ground is, is electric when it when they're, uh, you know, when they're all there. So, you know, nothing but fond memories. Thanks very much, Matt. Fingers crossed it goes ahead. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, David. Dan Joel, Radio Lance. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Um, you used the word frustration there, quite understandably. From the outside looking in, it feels like it's not clear what kind of criteria there are to call a game off for COVID reasons. Are you guys having your pre-match meal and getting that news any more aware of those criteria or are you just getting the announcement the same as we are? Um, well, it was funny. We were just having a conversation five minutes prior to it that we said, uh, we just read that no more games will get called off um, for, for COVID, things like that. You know, 23 will have to be drafted into play and stuff like that. And then, like I said, five minutes later, he comes in and tells us it's off. So um, I get that they've obviously travelled already and we've got a lot of cases. So that's, it is what it is. But 
Um, yeah, we're none the wiser as to when it could be called off, I suppose, or anything like that. We just have to be um, on it to, you know, the game's going ahead and that's how we have to think up until we get told different. Because I guess if it's snowing or pouring with rain or blowing a gale force wind and advertising boards are blowing around the ground, you've, you've got an idea that it might be in doubt, but something like this is very different, is it? It is, yeah. Um, like you say, with the one with the snow a couple of weeks ago, we were looking at it thinking, you know, this has got a chance of, of being off, which is, you know, unavoidable. And then last night was completely different. We got literally got told what, three hours, two and a half hours prior to the game, just out of nowhere that the game was off. Again, unavoidable, I suppose, but it was a completely different way of it happening. I suppose it might happen a bit more frequent now with what's going on in the world, but like I say, all we can do is prepare for the game as if it's on. I promise this isn't going to be an interview entirely about COVID, but <laughs> I know in people's working lives, in our office, for example, you have a positive case it makes everybody kind of redouble their efforts to try and you know stick to the protocols and even go back to what we were doing 12 months ago is that the case around a football club because you guys are pretty strict and pretty stringent and the premier league protocols are, are in place when you have had a case here and there does that really focus the mind on on trying to avoid this thing i suppose it does yeah um like you said before we've got the uh, the, the, the protocols in in place already around the place you know we tested we've got the masks we've got the distance and things like that but I suppose when you do get a case, it does make you think, oh, actually, it is still, it can still happen. So, you know, I think, well, as a, as in, you know, as a club, and as, I think the whole Premier League really will be doubling their efforts now to, you know, to make sure that it's stopping the cases so um, the games can go ahead. Pretty much every player I've ever spoken to about a postponement of any kind has said the worst thing about it when it's short notice is that you've done all your preparation and you're ramped up and you've got all this, whether it's nervous energy or just energy to go into a game and kind of no means to, 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 to let it out are you just absolutely desperate to get a game on now and get out there and play yeah we are yeah like you say when you sat there you know having your pre-match meal you're having a little conversation with the boys about you know what we're doing and what we need to be doing in the game things like that and then you get told it's off yeah it is a big you know it's like a, it's like a balloon really being popped you, like you say you're ready to go you're buzzing and there's nothing to do really so it's just, it was very frustrating uh, you know you go home and you watch the games that are on telly thinking you know we should be playing now so um, I'm looking for, I'm glad actually there's a game in two days' time. You know, been, it's frustrating when it gets called off and you know you've got another seven or ten days. I was thinking like that. So the good thing is, there's a game in two days. We're training later on and you know, we're ready to go. I'm absolutely sure that your manager will tell us later that he only looks at the next game and he's not too worried about the, the bigger picture. However, it's human nature, isn't it, to know where you are in that table and know what the situation is. And although you've got a couple of games in hand, those teams in front of you haven't really pulled away. Is that encouraging? Um, I suppose so, yeah. I know we'd much rather have the points on the board than the, the games in hand, but um, you know, only we always say it's up to us. You know, we, we don't really rely on other teams to lose. We have to do it ourselves. We can't be in the Premier League and, and relying on other teams to do bad. So um, the next game comes around quick, thankfully. So you know, we're going to Villa Park. Uh, it'll be a tough game, but we're looking to get three points and get out of the drop zone. And I suppose, although there was lots of build-up about beating Watford potentially and jumping above them and jumping out of the relegation places. If you beat Villa, the outcome could well be the same. Yeah, uh, that's what we're looking to do. Um, we'll work hard today and tomorrow and um, make sure we're ready to go and you know, hopefully we get the three points, jump out of the drop zone and, and kick on from there. As a group of players, you've talked about your experience and you know the fact you've been playing for a while, let's say. Are you quite calm about the situation? I mean, obviously you're aware of it, but it, I guess it doesn't help worrying about it too much. No, we're all quite calm. Um, you know, we, we, we're on the, um, you know, a nice little fine edge of being calm, but being right on it at the same time. You know, you can't obviously, we're not in a great uh, position at the minute, but we've been here before, we've been down this road before, um, and we've got out of it. So we can draw on them experiences from past seasons. And it's just about making sure that we, we keep working hard you know, and hopefully get a few results uh, quite soon. Cheers, Matt. All the best. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Phil the cop here. Um, I was just going to ask one more about the sort of the coronavirus situation. Just in, in, with um, Thomas Frank having suggested that it might be a good idea for all of this weekend's uh, games to be called off almost as a sort of a, a circuit breaker kind of thing. Um, what, what do you make of that suggestion? Do, do you think that could possibly be a, a good idea? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. And from my point of view, I just want to play football. So obviously, I think you know, from a player's point of view, it's 
we want to play. We want to get, you know, we, we want to come to the weekend and have the game, have the buzz, and, and that's what we've trained for all week. But, you know, obviously the safety of, of players, fans, and, and things like that is, is, is paramount. So, you know, hopefully the game can go ahead. But, you know, I can see why, I suppose, you know, if they, if they did call it like that, that um, you can see where, where they're coming from. Because, like I said, the safety of, of, of fans, players, and everything like that is obviously, is obviously comes first. But, from our point of view, we just want to play football. So hopefully we can we can go ahead as safely as possible. That's correct, cheers. Thanks, Phil. And finally, Alex James. Morning, Matt. You okay? Morning. Yeah, good. Thank you. Good stuff. Yeah, just a, a, one more on the COVID thing last night. So obviously, you, you, I think you said you, you found out as you were eating your pre-match meal, did you? So you were all with the players all together at the time and, and just got the word that game's off and then all disappeared off home to watch to watch the other games was it is that how it unfolded that was pretty much it yeah we were all sat there having our, having our, having our pre-match and then you know the, the fitness coach came in and said uh, the gaffers just rang the games off basically and that was that was about it and then we just all like what do we do now sort of thing um we knew we were in today anyway so it was you know there was no case of having to train or anything like that last night um we we're in today as it is so we'll probably do more today as we would have done um if we did have a game but yeah that, that's just you know, one by one, just start off sort of thing, and went on and watched the game. Yeah, it was it was very deflating, but it is what it is. Yeah, finished it, finished your tea, and on your way. What? Um, obviously, you've got two games in hand already, and there's uh, without sort of suggesting further Burnley games are going to be off. There, there's a possibility that more games are going to be called off over the coming two, three, four weeks. Does that concern you in terms of fixture congestion later in the season, playing too many games in too short space of time, etc.? Uh, not myself. No, I prefer the games. Um, you know, um, thick and fast. Really, I mean, that's what we that's what we do. The, uh, do play football for you know the training's good and it's obviously needed, but you know the games are what we what we want to do. Uh, you know, the, you feel the atmosphere and the balls and things like that. So we're a fit side. Um, we have been you know over the years. Uh, we work hard, so we'll be, we'll be well equipped to to take on. You know, if there's a lot of games thick and fast, and you know if, if that's how it is, that's how it is. And just a couple on the get on the game on Saturday. What have you thought? I know mean, it's a small sample size, but what have you made of um, of Villa and of Gerard? Because I'm guessing as a former former club, you sort of keep a, half an eye on their their results anyway. Yeah, no, they've done well since he came in. Um, you know, you get you get that sort of new manager bounce. You know what people talk about, and uh, you can see that he's come in and, and he's got the lads working very hard. You know, um, the tempo has gone up a lot. They're, they're committing a lot of men forward, and you know it's. If personally myself, I can see a lot of the players as well. It'd be, it'd be great to play for you know someone like Steven Gerrard that a lot of the lads probably watched when they were growing up playing for England and stuff like that. So um, it's going to be a tough game. Is it like I said before? He's got them working, and you know he's got them winning. So it's going to be a tough game. And just lastly, for me, I know when we spoke to you um, a few weeks ago, a month or so ago, you were talking about trying to improve the, the goals and the assists column, um, and, and Charlie Taylor was saying the same sort of thing to us the other week as well. As as sort of two fullbacks, do you are you sort of pleased with how things are going defensively and, and offering it attacking wise? Because you, you both seem to have been among the, the sort of most creative players in in recent weeks for Burnley. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's been going all right. You know, we've not got as many clean sheets this season as we wanted to. Uh, we picked up a good one at the weekend against a, a strong West Ham side. So, you know, we can build on that. Uh, but I think we can always help um, at the other end of the field more. Um, you know, we have to create chances for the, for the strikers. Uh, you know, that's inevitable, especially the, the way the game's gone these days with the fullbacks are, you know, very um, they needed higher up the field as well. So, you know, it's up to me and Chaz to, to, to chip in with, you know, helping out. Getting some strikers, uh, getting the strikers some some clear cut chances to, to get some goals. Nice. One. All right. Cheers, Matt. All the best. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Alex. Uh, so that concludes the broadcast section. Uh,